fact, Cara Diaguardi has done very well in a tough business, the music industry. She's best known for having been a judge on American Idol and has written songs for and worked with such stars as Katy Perry, Carrie Underwood, Celine Dion, Enrique Iglesias, the list goes on. For several years, Cara Diaguardi has lived in York, and she now spends a lot of time on the nonprofit she founded, Inspired Nation, which helps young people, especially through music. Now, given her success, you might think she's one of those people who knew she wanted to get into the music business from an early age, but that was not the case. How old were you when you wrote your first song? I probably love working with young people so much because I was quite older when, well not old, but um, older in terms of today's standard for writing songs. I was around 23. So you weren't 10 years old and doodling no, on I your was notebook not. in I class. Was, I was doodling, <laughs> but I wasn't doodling anything uh, too worthwhile. I had always loved music growing up and it was a part of my upbringing, but I think I had trouble back then sort of thinking about a career in music or a career in theater because I came from such a conservative background where nobody really did that. Like, they didn't want you to get into that crazy yeah, that show crazy business. crazy music with all those, you know, crazy people. So I kind of did what everyone else around me was doing and, you know, tried to do as well as I could in school went to Duke and was like, I'm going to be a lawyer. And then I got there and I fell into a pretty deep depression. I started to think, you know, I really don't want to be a lawyer. I, I've always loved music. I've denied it. And that's probably why I'm going through this kind of dark period. So I graduated and said to my parents, you know, I'm going to be in a garage band, which they were like, really? <laughs> Six figures later, you want to be in a garage band. This expensive, yeah. elite college education, yeah. and you want to be in a garage band. <laughs> yeah, it was, didn't go over so well. <laughs> but they, you know, the deal was I had to get my education, and then I could do whatever I wanted. And music for me became kind of the best therapy that I never paid for. When you were in junior high school, high school, did you participate in choir and things like that? I did. I was in choir, but I, I was not a great rule follower. So choir was read these notes like this and sing like this and hold that for this beat and hold that. And I just, I always wanted to be free with music. I, I guess for me, it was the way I could express myself. And nobody could tell me how to do that. When you were 16 years old, <laughs> oh who boy. was your favorite musician or group? You know, I always loved Aretha Franklin. I loved Michael Jackson. I loved Mariah Carey. I loved R&B. I think it was because it had so much emotion in it and I could really, it really resonated with me. When you got out of college, did you join a garage band? I did. It was called Grandma Trips. It was, I don't know where we came up with that name. It was horrible. And it was me and a bunch of like four guys up in Armonk, like in the basement. And at first I was the background singer, so I would sing like all the licks. And um, eventually I was like, hey, you know what? What if I write some songs? And they were like, yeah, 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 just sing, sing the backgrounds, sing it. And so um, eventually I was such a pain in the neck for them that I just kept asking them and asking them. They were like, fine, write a song, God. Just sing the backgrounds and write a song. What was the big break that propelled you into the music industry in a serious way? Um, you know, it's never one big break. It's a series of breaks. And, you know, you think your first hit, you're going to be like, have arrived and everyone's going to be calling for you, but they don't. Um, I think I'd had a few hits internationally, um, but back in, I think it was 1999, I got to write the entire Enrique Iglesias' first English album. So I had like seven songs on it. And that's really when my career broke open, but I, I had written for um, Kylie Minogue at that point, I'd written for Ricky Martin, but I that break kind of showed people that I may be sticking around. So the legal world didn't lose a thing when you decided not <laughs> to go down the path of becoming a lawyer. Uh, I don't want to say that, maybe I would have been good. I, my friends tell me I would have been great like in a court of law, because you know I was obsessed with law and order for so many years, I'd be like, I could do that. Right. Yeah.
What Cara Diaguardi now finds especially rewarding is working with her nonprofit Inspired Nation. Its goal is to empower young people through music, to mentor them, and to raise money that goes back into communities to help young people in need. And, you know, we're able to touch upon everything from pediatric cancer to child sexual abuse um, to music in youth service organizations. Um, and that kind of makes me feel like, even though I'm not a lawyer, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for something good, so. And Inspired Nation just had a big fundraising event at Agonquid Playhouse a couple of weeks ago. It's their major event for the year, and it's, again, her way of giving back. She, she talked about being on Idol, and they're just judging people. She wanted to not just judge young singers, but to mentor them, and that's part of what she's doing now. Really inspire them, and that's always good to have that constructive criticism. Yeah, yeah, it's not just about being snarky, which is what <laughs> Idol did well in, in an entertaining <laughs> way, but there's more to it than that. And if you'd like to find out more about Inspired Nation and about what else Cara, Cara Diaguardi is up to these days, including the restaurant she co-owns in Maine, and, of course, Inspired Nation, just head to our New Center Maine website or mobile app.